thinking of it. Do we have any farmers? I've got a cousin. He grows all kinds. He's got goats and all. He's got honeybees and everything. We're just waiting for everybody. He runs marathon. He's like Superman. He's one of my heroes. He's a marine, a martial artist. He just does it all. He's got it all together. He's all that in a bag of chips. And, and I, I know that whenever we go around his farm, he's always got some dung somewhere. No, I'm not talking about who's sitting beside him. But I'm talking about the dung. And there's something about dung. Does anybody, can we just talk about dung in the house of God tonight? Is that all right? Because dung is a fertilizer. It's a fertilizer. And it's God's own way of fertilizing the world for free. And I've learned that if you stick close enough to God, he doesn't charge you for anything. And many people think tithes and offerings is the charge for God moving, but we done talked about that. We know better than that. We have to understand the way that God fertilizes your life and calls you to grow is through poo-poo. I'm not talking about the Chinese tray either, if you know what that is. I'm talking about the sticky things in your life is what causes you to get better. It's it's impossible for you to grow and develop and become better than you are in good times and good seasons, and that's not the TV show either. We have to understand it's only through difficult times, it's only through dark seasons, it's only through dark hours that negatives can even be developed. Remember that when we talked about that, that develops can only be, or negatives can only be developed in dark places, in dark rooms. And if we could ever understand that sometimes we're going to have to dig down inside of our life and figure out what's going on because listen not every job you've lost was your employer's fault sometimes it's because you don't know how to show up at work on time and keep your mouth shut you've got to dig around that thing and find it what's the source of the problem and through the process this passage of scripture begins to teach us something about how God cultivates our life and it's through dung somebody just say dung and smile when you say it can you say it with me tonight Hallelujah. This man wanted to give up and throw in the towel because he didn't realize that the gardener was in his midst. There was a gardener, a professional at cultivating and growing things in his midst, and he just thought he was the dresser of the vineyard. He just thought he was the man that pushed the wheelbarrow. He had no idea who was even in his midst. Can I submit to you what changing our mind is really like tonight? What it's really talking about? If we're on the same subject, Jesus was trying to get us to understand through parables that our mind has to be where his is. We have to think like him, act like him, and talk like him. And then he tells us a story about a man who didn't even see the potential of the person in their midst and was ready to give up on his life because he underestimated who had come to his rescue and to his help. And if we could ever understand, the person sitting beside us could be holding the key to our next miracle. That it doesn't have to be in a platform or a prayer line with a bottle of oil and somebody in a suit. But it could simply be someone offering an encouraging word or saying, you know, I'll agree with you. I believe with you. You know, one of the things that blesses my heart is on Tuesday night, Randy, that's in the back, he shows up. And it's hard to tell. He might have 15, 20, 30. It's hard to tell how many people show up back there. And guess what? They're looking for some help for somebody that understands that can touch them in their situation. And those same people, not talking about, they probably never come to church. Am I telling the truth, Randy? But they've learned to discern help where they can find it. And I really wish we had more people that were almost more messed up because church people, we think we got it all together, don't we? Because we look the part, and we even know how to cover it up when we're messed up. How are you doing it? I'm blessed, highly favored of God. I'm excited, fire-filled, pew-walking, devil-smacking, tongue-talking, bible to all that. We know all the jargons and the slang, like I'm saved and born again, and, and the blood of Jesus is shed abroad. Go to somebody who's never been to church and tell them the blood of Jesus is shed abroad in your heart. They're going to look at you like a space cadet. They're going to say, what horror movie did you watch for Halloween? And what type of blood was she? What is even going Because they don't even think like that. Yet, because we know the cliches and the jargon, we can cover up the fact that we're upset, we're tired, our back's hurting, we had a long day at work, we're not happy when we get home, and we're not happy when we get up in the morning, and our cereal, somebody drunk all the milk, and we went to pour coffee, didn't have any sweet and low, none of that. We can get upset about all kinds of things and come to church and put on a smile, and everything's right and everything's okay. I'm looking for some real people. Is there anybody that could just raise your hand about it and say, guess what, preacher? In my life, there are some areas I feel unfruitful. 
I'm going to raise both hands because there's just some areas I'm working on. And I'm talking about this tonight because I believe if we could ever stop being so super spiritual in the sense and start just listening to God instead of trying to buy a tape or a CD or get somebody's prayer line to work for us and just start saying, God, can you please help me dig down in the stuff in my life that's keeping me from growing, the childish mindsets, the things in my... Can you please deliver my mind from being locked up in a certain way and get me to the place where I can start thinking like you? Because if I could ever repent or if I could ever change my mind and start thinking like you you can discern the people in your midst that's designed to help you and the problem is if you don't begin to see them through the same eyes that God sees them you're looking at Gomer Pyle on the outside but you're also looking at your next breakthrough and your next miracle because the act of kindness that you might show them could unlock the obedience because God saw your heart and your intentions and understood that you weren't in it for the things or the money or the houses but you were in it because you simply love God and you wanted to be a blessing to somebody else and through the process God said because you dug that thing out of you and you even push through the dung I want you to know fruitful seasons are coming I'm here to fertilize something in your life digging and dung it the man wanted to give up and throw in the towel Israel we talked about last week Israel they wanted to curse Pharaoh for 400 years, they were enslaved and, and re, they were rebuked and they were bashed down and they had to watch them spend all the money. They had to polish all the gold and, and shine up all the jewelry. They didn't have none of it. And, and through the process, they had to make bricks without straw, which I've never done that, but they say, tell me it's hard anyway. They had to do all these horrible, they were cursing Pharaoh the whole time. Yet guess what? In one instant, the very man that they cursed, they got the wealth of the man that they cursed. It tells me through the process, I've got to be careful who the, the, how the people that I treat in my life. Because at any given moment, they could be gathering up my next breakthrough. I'm not trying to say I'm going to go take your car or your house. But I do want you to know that God will cause men to give unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He would cause them to give unto your bosom for unknown reasons. I'm just looking for the day that somebody walks up and says, listen, I heard you're dreaming about this. Just have it. I've got more than I need. Just take it. And usually, isn't it the people with more than enough that you get mad at anyway because you don't have enough, if we're just really true? It's amazing. The people that, that hate talking about money are usually the people that don't have any, and that's the reason you don't have any. That's a side point. We have to understand through the process that we can't despise everybody around us just because they appear like they're doing better than us. Is that, am I talking to anybody at all tonight? We're on the same page. I'm trying to go on. I'm just hung up on this. Uh, when, it, when it starts getting quiet, I just can't get off the foot. I just have to push till I hear something. We see the tree was digged and it was dunged. It was digged and it was dung. And it's amazing because the favor in this situation was brought from someone that knew about production but didn't appear on the outside like he knew anything at all. And it takes me back to the story Whenever Jesus was perceived as the gardener after he resurrected. Isn't it amazing how that as soon as he was resurrected, it almost looked like he was putting on gardener clothes? If that don't mean anything to you, I would love to take the time and show you all the comparisons. But just let me throw this at you. If you swallow it, that's great. If you don't, spit it out and, and we'll move on through the process. But I find it so amazing that after Jesus was resurrected and came back on the earth, he came dressed as someone that, that came to help cultivation. Because guess what? It's not just enough to get up from the dead. It's not just enough to be saved from your old life if you don't ever grow and ever do anything. And we see that he was misperceived, that, that people mistook him for a gardener. And I don't even believe that it was a mistake to the process because I believe he was trying to get us to understand that all the unfruitful areas in our life, he was putting on the jacket and getting the shovel and putting his gloves on and getting his old gardener's hat together and ready to say, guess what? In all the areas that you've been unfruitful and not producing, I want to help you and show you how to produce. Yet people didn't perceive him as the one that could really do that just because he was wearing the clothes they didn't think he had the knowledge and isn't it amazing how even in your own life people may look at you and think that you're obscure and forgotten about and even though you may even look like you have something great on the outside most people highly underestimate what you have on the inside do you know the reason that Goliath messed up and lost to David was it was because he thought he was just a boy on the outside and couldn't see the warrior on the inside and if we could ever understand that we do have more inside of us than what we're getting out and that through our unfruitful 
fruitful seasons if we could just hold on and push through the dung that the dung is producing something in our life that, that will forever change us. Psalms 115 verse 12. Let's read this together. Psalms 115 verse 12. The Lord hath been mindful of us, and he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Somebody say, the Lord is mindful of me. If we really understood that, that would make us turn over a seat with excitement tonight because it means we're on God's mind, which means we're not forgotten about, which 